Well, I didn't catch this on a 16 hook, did I? And this week, as you can see, go fishing's come to sunny Spain. And we're here in the San Carlos fish market, which is actually the second largest in the whole of the Mediterranean. And if you want to find out what you're going to catch anywhere in the world, in any sort of water, the place to come is the local fish market. Let's have a wander around. These things have always fascinated me. You've got to be careful because they bite you. They're called a mantis shrimp. They're a huge, great big crustacean, and they've got these big pincers here, which if you're not careful, they can slice through your fingers. The succulent meat inside, when it's boiled, it's just like a prawn or a scampi or lobster. They're absolutely delicious. Although they don't look like it, do they? Now these are interesting fish. Although they're ready for the hotel, We'll just get one out and have a look. These are a member of the Gurnard family, and they really are, colour-wise, a beautiful fish. I think this is a tub Gurnard, although there's several different species. They've got these feelers here that they actually crawl along the seabed with, and they've got these beautifully coloured fins there. Look at those greens and blues. They're really exquisitely coloured. It's almost a shame to eat them. Well, there we are. <laughs> Let's put it back. Well, there's lots of lovely shrimps and prawns along here. I'd like to take some of these home. They're enormous. Beautiful. Oh, look at this. Wow. <laughs> That's some bass, isn't it? There's a lot of British anglers that like to catch a fish that sort of size. They're fabulous eating. They're very, very firm in the flesh. That's an absolutely beautiful specimen. I love this place. I could spend all day here. I think a lot of the really big fish that they get here, the stingrays, the small sharks, oh, there's quite a few eels there. I think all the big ones have already gone. Quite a few mullet there, too. Well, I'm afraid I've been kidding you all along. We're not exactly going sea fishing. As interesting as this fish market's been, we're actually off inland to fish the fabulous River Ebro for its barbel and carp. Come to fish in this part of Spain, the dam here at Tivenis is a wonderful spot to try a downstream exploration of the Ebro. Let me show you exactly where we are. This is the 500 mile course of the Ebro, which actually bisects the Iberian Peninsula and it comes all the way down here through Amposta to Delta Ebre. And here it spews its water into the Mediterranean. Now let's have a look at it in more detail on another map. This is the huge delta area where a lot of rice is grown. It's actually the second largest wetland in Europe, only to that of the Camargue. Here's Amposta, and we're going all the way up the river here to Tivenis. Now this river is absolutely full of fish, and the dominant species are barbel and carp, but there's also a lot of mullet about. So I've brought a very light fly fishing outfit in case I have a chance to try for them, but really, with a heavy feeder rod such as this and a cage feeder, I could catch fish throughout the entire river with it because it's a very powerful flow and this sort of rig gets your bait right down on the bottom static. But then, as I like to go float fishing, wherever I go fishing in the world, I bought my centre pin reel along, 11 foot Avon rod, big chunky float, and I've got a strap pegging rig on the bottom. And I think I'm going to give that a go too. Now, wherever I've been fishing throughout the world with a fly rod, mullet always seem to prefer something with white on it, so I've chosen this coachman to start with. We'll see anyway.
Now there's a lot of mullet in this little run here. There's quite a few very close in. I'm just easing this through them now. Sometimes it's a fish a throw. Other days you just don't know. So I'm going to sweep it round the fast water. See if we get any takes like that first. Got a lovely little light brook rod here, seven and a half feet. Takes a size four line. And the coachman's tied on a size 14 hook. Lovely stuff. If we get one on that sort of tackle, we're really going to get a lovely fight. Comes around lovely there. It's a lovely little spot to fish here. It's so pretty. And there's lots of pools that I can try out there if I want to. Just wandering about. Very few people bring a, a fly rod to Spain, but of course the mullet, which sometimes are actually a nuisance on heavy ledger gear, can provide some wonderful fun on a light fly rod. <laughs> this one's really going. They're fabulous fun. It's gone right across, <laughs> right across that current. I don't think it's a particularly big mullet either. But wow, that really did take the fly then. Generally speaking, they've been a bit slow, but that one really took it. Oh, it's a good fish. It's fabulous fun on this light tackle. It really is. It's, just absolutely nothing like them. I think it's a mullet anyway. <laughs> Whoa, come on. It's got a propeller for a tail, I think. Get a bit of line back on the reel here because the, the weed around my feet here that the, the weir's brought down is a bit heavy. Oh, it's still going. Wow. Still going. Come on. Oh, that's a nice size mullet. I forgot to bring my normal trout landing net with me, so I've just screwed a pan landing net onto the... On, come here! Onto a bank stick, and there we are. Got him. Got you, and that does as a, a makeshift landing net. Let's have a look at you. Oh! Let's just take the hook out carefully. There we are. And there you are, a mullet. I think this one is a, a thin lips mullet. I've got the double dorsal fin, spiky one, and then a, a fairly soft one there. And they've got this most peculiar mouth. A funny thing, aren't you? <laughs> Let's put you back straight away. Well, there you go. <laughs> Went out of there like a bat out of hell. Well, that was a nice start. Let's have another go. <laughs> Look at this, a tiny little mullet. Look at you. Oh, <laughs> it isn't a mullet. Well, I do believe, I've never caught one before, but I know they're in the river. That looks like an American, it must be, with a mouth like that. It's an American black bass. Look at that, an enormous great big mouth. <laughs> they're a perch-like fish. And the Americans, when they grab them out of the water, they just get hold of the bottom lip. You can see it's a perch from its spiny dorsals. Up you come. Isn't that lovely? Well, I've never caught one of those before. I wonder how big they grow to. In the States, they get to something like 10, 15, 20 pounds. But this one's a, <laughs> it's a corker. Let's put him back. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Move on down river a bit. This is the 
the spot I've chosen, and isn't it beautiful? There's a huge, great big bay here. The river comes belting along left to right here, and it's about 30 to 40 feet deep in the middle and doing something like three or four knots. And then it comes up very sharply here along my own bank where there's a plateau, and it's even about 15 or 16 feet down here. I'm just on the edge of the drop-off. It really is a, a majestic spot. It's just the sort of location in this big, deep eddy here where you're going to get some concentrations of barbel and carp. I'm getting a lot of tiny little bites at the moment from the mallet. There's so many mallets in this river <laughs> that they, they keep on banging the sweet corn. I've got a... whoops. <laughs> I've got a block end on, I've got breadcrumbs and corn in the block end and four grains of sweet corn on a size eight so that it's all become <laughs> chewed to bits by these mullets. On a huge great river like this of course it takes some time to to get the barbel and the carp into the swim and on the feed. You have to put quite a lot of feed in, several tins of corn and I've also emptied a couple of tins of luncheon meat into the swim, chopped up in half inch cubes and that's all drifting about on the bottom down here now and I'm just going to have to wade through the mullet bites trying not to strike them until we get a carp or a barbel just an easy lob out onto the edge of the flow and I let the line go between my fingers down to the bottom still going still going I've gone a little bit beyond the edge, and the ledge now, and I'm on the drop-off, and it's and the feed has just stopped now. That's probably 25 foot deep there, 30 foot deep. We'll give that a go anyway. The lovely thing about this river valley is it's so big and, and majestic. So many spots to try. It's really lovely. Oh, here we are. Feels like a barbel. It's incredible. Eight pound line would seem to be silly on a river like this, but you really do need it. Look at that. Incredible power. And it's only a, it's only a barbel of about a pound and a half. It's stupid. I don't believe it. Now, if that had been at home, I would have thought that was seven or eight pounds. The power of these fish is absolutely incredible. Look at that. Our first barbel from the Ebro. Whoops, out you come. We won't bother with the net with you. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Very much like our British barbel, of course, but they're not. They're a, they're a subspecies. It's got a much bigger head section. Whoops. <laughs> There you are. Very big snout. Same even scale pattern. Underslung mouth, four barbels. Lovely little fish. Let's put you straight back. I'm not going to bother to put these in the net. There you go. Now, before we cast out again, I'm going to make up a new Paternoster link because I've got a bit of a, a kink on that one. Let's take the old one off. i will be very careful with loose lines, so I always make a point of putting it into an inside pocket. Out of harm's way. Right, now to make the pattern off the link, I actually make it out of much lighter line so that if that gets caught up, then the feeder comes off and I'm still connected to the fish itself. This is about 10 inches long and about 20 inches up the line. I just hold it parallel with it like that. Turn it into a, a loop like that. And then just go round once, twice, three, four times, 
and pull it through. This is called the four turn water knot. There it is before I tighten it. When you tighten it, you must wet it. Pull nice and evenly. It goes into a really strong knot like that. And you just bite off the loose end. And there's your paternoster link tied to the line. And there's your hook link, which is in fact the real line. And the hook goes back on here. Got a size six on here that will take four or five grains of corn, lump of bread flake or a big cube of meat. And it's a strongly forged hook because you never know what you're gonna hook here from a seven pound barbel to a 25 pound carp. Although all the, the big carp I've hooked in the past have all managed to get me in the rocks and get away, although I've had quite a few double figure fish. Put the feeder on. And the nice thing about this is there's no swivels and links and running this and running that. You don't really need this if you're fixed, fixed feeder pattern string. There we are, look, couldn't be quicker, could it? And it stands away from the real line like that on every cast. Why on earth are they are so intent on getting these, getting in these rocks? I just don't know. Oh, you can feel the feeder bumping. Here it comes. That's another chunky looking fully sco carp. Ooh, the old knee joints are going a bit there. Come on, in you come. Gotcha. <laughs> Put the rod down carefully. Whoops. Now where's the hook? Just in the bottom lip. There we are. What a pretty looking fish. Whoops, aren't you? That's lovely, look at that. Carp in perfection. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful shaped fish. of minutes ago I saw what I thought was a very good carp come down that drainage weir there so I'm gonna have one more cast piece of hornworts and then I'm gonna give that a go it doesn't look like much of a carp spot but in this river they're liable to be anywhere now what I've done I've got a couple of shots about 10 inches from the hook which, which is a size six and I'm using a large lump of bread flake and I'm just dunking it, literally dunking it into this pool which is about three foot deep and I can feel them knocking against the, the line. There must be loads of them in here and I'm feeling for bites. Hello, there's one. Yes, we're in. Whoa, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> That was a tremendous bite. Oh, oh this is fantastic fun. <laughs> We're pool carp fishing. <laughs> oh, this one's a real, a real go. It's trying to get under that flush there. Oh, it's an incredible fight on six pound line. Absolutely incredible. Can't do a lot with this one. I don't want them to hurt themselves on those rocks, so I'm going to let them tire themselves out in this pool and then just work them around to the landing net, I think. Oh, that is a good fish. Oh, that was lucky. I was 
so worried then that was going to get its head downstream and shoot. Come on. Oh. <laughs> gotcha. Whew. What a fight. Let's take the free spool off. I was so worried then that that was going to be a... Oh, that is a good one. Whoa. Whew. Let's put him down here where we can rest him in the water. Wow, what a fabulous looking fish. There really is something about the wild carp, isn't there? Look at that, that's absolutely incredible. Look at the power, and that led me a right song and dance in that Whirlpool. Isn't that fantastic? I didn't really expect <laughs> to catch them in this unusual way this morning, but it's been really terrific. <laughs> I've got a six pound line on me trotting reel here and uh, <laughs> I can't believe it. This is an incredible fight. Look at that. Whoa. Now then, I'm going to try and net it in the pool because if it gets below in those rocks, I've had it. It's not tiring yet. Whoa. No. Oh. Let's see if we can bring him up and let him go back into the net with the flow. Yes. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. Whoa. Whoa there. Oh. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, <laughs> it's so lively. Not easy to get hold of. There we are. Oh. Would you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> Visiting Catalonia is experiencing the real Spain. To get here from the UK, scheduled flights from Heathrow, Gatwick, Manchester and Birmingham to Barcelona take just two hours, followed by a two-hour southerly drive along fast motorways to Amposta and St Carlos. If you're going to hire a car, the only requirement is your standard driving licence but don't forget some pesetas for the toll charges along the motorways. Although the Ebro is capable of producing massive bags of carp and barbel, we've tried to give you a general flavour of the area, and so we've moved around a lot and used various techniques. In this climate, the fishing can be considered all year round, but the very best time is from March till June. Fishing licences, and these cover you wherever you fish in Spain, cost £2 for a fortnight, but they must be purchased in advance from the fisheries department in Tarragona. As far as tackle's concerned, I recommend you bring along a powerful feeder rod, a float rod, and if you fancy a double with the mullet, the fly rod too. Hook baits like corn and bread can be purchased locally, but ground bait cannot, so I suggest you bring along at least 20 pounds of dry crumb. And don't forget the suntan cream. 